Welcome and good morning to St. John's Lutheran Church. We're glad that you're with us today for worship. We begin our gathering now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Write your blessed name, O Lord, upon our hearts, there to remain so indelibly driven that no prosperity nor adversity shall ever move me from your love. Be to us, O Lord, a strong tower of our defense, a comforter in tribulation, a deliverer in distress, and a very present help in trouble, and a guide to heaven through the many temptations and dangers of this life. For we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning, Now the Green Blade Rises. Our first reading this morning is recorded by St. Luke in the book of Acts, chapter 2. You'll notice the background for this morning's reading is a fleur-de-lis, also known as the iris. It represents the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reminds us also that as the green blade comes up, and that as the spear pierced the side of our Lord, so our Lord Jesus Christ has come forth from death, that he has risen up from the grave, and that he now is resurrected to everlasting life forever and ever. The reading from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven apostles, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from the power of death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning the Messiah, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence." 
Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading of Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Our second reading is from St. Peter's first letter, beginning in chapter 1. St. Peter writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you also rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, so that the genuineness of your faith may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel text comes to you today from John 20, verse 19 through 29. It reads, On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with this he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was with the disciples when Jesus came. And the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger 
where the nails were and put my hand into the side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Here ends the gospel. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I can imagine that most of you spent this past weekend, Easter, celebrating in some fashion, some way you're trying to, in a social distance way, still have the traditions that you've had in past years. And that makes me think of a tradition that I had when I was a kid. My brother and I would get up really early before sunrise service and we would go searching for the Easter basket that the Easter bunny left in our house. But it was hidden somewhere and we had to find that Easter basket. And it was our pleasure to go searching for that basket because we knew it would be filled with so many wonderful things. We didn't earn this basket. It really, it didn't matter whether we were naughty or it, we were nice. Um, Easter morning, we were going to have an Easter basket there for us. It was given to us freely. And so we were so excited to run around the house looking for this basket. Jesus in our gospel text gives his disciples something free, something that they did not earn, something that they didn't deserve. Jesus shows up among the disciples and they are behind the locked doors. They are absolutely terrified. They're, they're scared that the Jewish leaders are going to come find them and kill them. So they are hiding. So they are collecting things of the flesh, things that the world gives them, which is fear and, um, and, and just being afraid. And, and so they're hiding behind this locked doors. And so they're collecting things that aren't, aren't great. I, I would venture to guess a question for you would be, what also are you collecting? What are you putting in your basket? What are the things that affect you? And I have a basket here today. It's kind of unusual looking items inside. And it depicts things that we tell ourselves that may be negative things we put in our basket as adults or as kids or as teens. Things that maybe are people have said to us that we're not good enough or smart enough or talented enough. And we put those things in our baskets. As adults, sometimes we take those things that we've been told as children or as teenagers and we hold on to them our whole lives. We, we let people affect how our thoughts, our attitude, it might be a spouse who just is grumpy because he can't leave the house. Or maybe it's a boss who cannot handle this pandemic very well and just kind of grumps around the office. And we hold on to those things and we allow them to steal our joy. Those thoughts that create our attitudes. And those things, those thoughts are powerful and they affect the attitude that we have. So I would challenge you to think about what you are filling your basket with. Is it negativity, gloom and doom? Is it impatience, um, irritation, frustration? What is it that you're putting in your basket? 
So let's see what Jesus put in his basket, what he gave to his disciples. So Jesus shows up in the middle of all of this. Uh, the disciples are afraid. They're behind locked doors. They're terrified. And Jesus shows up. And what does he do? He says, peace be with you. Jesus gives them peace and he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. Jesus gives us something that the world cannot give us. Jesus says, peace be with you. He says this three different times throughout this text. I think he wanted the disciples to have peace. Jesus gave them peace and he gave them the Holy Spirit. And he gives this to you as well. So the challenge that I would have for you is, are you filling your basket with negative things, thoughts, labels maybe that have been given to you as a child, maybe poor attitude? Or are you filling it with what God has given you? Maybe things like, Romans 12, 2, that says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Or maybe one of my favorites that comes from John 16, 33, that says, in this world, you will have tribulation, but cheer up. I have overcome the world. Or maybe it's Maybe you're putting in your basket Philippians 4, 8, which is one of my favorites, that says, Finally, my br brother, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. It's all about perspective, isn't it? I want to read you a quick story on the power of perspective. It says, it's a letter to, from a college student that says, Dear Mom and Dad, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Are you sitting down? You might need to sit down. I'm writing to tell you all that all is going well for me. My skull fracture is healing nicely from the fall that I had as I leaped to the ground to my safety as my college dormitory was on fire. But thankfully, I'm safe. I met a guy at a local cult, cult revival. He's a Satan worship, worshiper, and it turns out the devil isn't so bad after all. And I live with him, and, and I'm having his baby. He is really quite a nice guy, and I know how much you love children. My boyfriend says I don't need an education, so I'm living with him in his mother's basement, and all is going fine. Oh, by the way, none of this is true. What is true is I'm failing history, and could you send, send me some money because my funds are depleted? It's all about perspective, and God gives us a new perspective because Jesus Christ has died for you and for me. And that gives us new, a new perspective on life. That gives us the, the, a basket full of really great things. That gives us an eternity with him. Peace be with you. Amen. The children's sermon today is about the really exciting thing that happened last Sunday. Can you remember what happened a whole week ago last Sunday? What was last Sunday? It was Easter, right? And that was a really exciting day. Now, if you remember what makes that really exciting, you can tell your mom or dad or whoever you're with at this time, you can tell them what you know about Easter. So what do you know about Easter? So Easter isn't just about the Easter bunny or Easter baskets or chocolate, right? It's about something bigger, something really huge and amazing, right? It's about that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross 
and rose again. And he did that all for you. Is that amazing or what? So I, I want you to not forget about how amazing that gift is that God gave you. He gave his son to die for you. So now what I want you to do is get a couple pieces of paper and a pen or maybe some colors or marker, but I want you to get two sheets of paper or you can do it like me and, 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 and do it on two pages of a notebook like this. And on the one side of the, of the piece of paper, I want you to write all the good things that God has given you. So maybe it might be he gave his son, Jesus Christ, or maybe it's your family or your friends, or maybe it's your dog. You can write whatever you want to write, all the things that you're thankful for on one side of the sheet of paper. And then on the other side, I want you to write all the good things that you can do because Jesus has blessed you and given you good things. You can do good things for others. So on this side, the good things that God has given you. And then on this side, all the good things that you can do for others. So I wrote a couple things. Okay, so um, a good thing that you could do um, would be maybe you could give your mom and dad a hug and tell them you love them. Or maybe you could clean up your room. Or maybe when your mom is putting away dishes or your dad's putting away dishes in the kitchen, you could help clear the table. Or maybe um, you have a brother or sister and you read them a book. That would be good things, right? So I want you to think about and make a list of the things that you would like to do because you have been good, good, given good things by God. Now you can go out and do good things for your friends, your family, and your neighbors. So make a list and think about that list week and then you can go back to that list and 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 come up with things to do um, and show your gratefulness to God this week. All right, let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all the good things that you have given us. Lord, we thank you so much that you have given us your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us for all of our sins. And Lord, thank you that, um, that we are able to go out and do good things for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. See you later. Let us join our hearts in prayer for God's people in this place and for all the world over in their hour of need. O most loving Father, you want us to give thanks in all circumstances and to lay all our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us. Grant that the fears and anxieties of our mortal lives may not hide from us the light of your immortal love, shown to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God, you are full of compassion, and so we commend ourselves to you, and especially we give over to your loving care, Tyler, Gary, Lily, Melvin, Vern, Walker, Audrey, Cade, Dieter, Dylan, Alex, Robin, Moni, and Ardeth. O Lord, you know the needs of your children, and so we ask that you remember every promise that you have made to them. O Lord, for each of us, and for all of us together, be the goal of our own earthly pilgrimage. Be our rest upon the way. Give us refuge from the turmoil of worldly distractions. Shelter us, O Lord, beneath the shadow of your wings. And let our hearts, so often a sea of restless waves, find peace and rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, who have given their loved ones over to your everlasting light. O oh Lord, together we remember Verna, Bev, 
Norm, Jean, Evelyn, Dan, Joan, and also those whom we name now in the quiet of our hearts. O Lord, as you have gathered them around your banquet table that has no end, as you have set before them a feast, O Lord, make space for us too and lead us to the day when we shall be reunited with those who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we ask that you watch over all of our friends, our neighbors, our brothers and sisters who worship at Church of the Damascus Road, the prison ministry of the Western Iowa Synod. O God, you are the one of justice and mercy. Your Son declared release to the captives as a sign of your reign, and he promised paradise to the penitent thief beside him on the cross. Give your strength and perseverance to all who worship together at Church of the Damascus Road. Make known to them your gracious power of forgiveness through your Son's death and resurrection, that they may support each other throughout this time of separation and sustain them, O Lord, with the promise of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray for all of those in any position of authority or responsibility, that as they face difficult decisions, you may give them wisdom and courage. We pray especially for President Trump, for Governor Reynolds, for the governors of every state, and for the rulers and leaders of every land the world over, O Lord, that in this time of suffering and uncertainty, you may lay before them a clear path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, the stillness of our souls, we yet hear your voice, and we know again that you are God. Quiet our restless hearts with the knowledge that you stand with us in these perilous times, keeping watch over your own. Rekindle our faith and light the lamp of hope within our hearts. And then, when our time is finished, Deal with us as seems best to you, for where you lead, we can go confidently with our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands then, O Lord our God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Blessings to you this week. Amen.